you know, there was, I was praying, you know, Lord, what does today's message need to look like? And I couldn't get away from what I shared with the ladies recently, you know, from a mother's heart of what needs to be shared today. Because if anybody in any of you that, that care for other people, mother or father, you want those that you love to go and be equipped with whatever they're going into the world to do. All of us could sit here today. I love that last worship song. God is the one who completes us. God should be our everything. We can all sit here today and be a victim of something if we don't let God heal us where we are. But God has equipped us to be victorious in this life that we live. The enemy would want us to sit here or the enemy would not even want us to be in church today because of maybe a hurt or a wound or a disappointment in our life. But God says, I have caused you to triumph. I have set you in this life. I have not left you helpless, but I have set you in this life to win in this life. So I'm gonna share my heart with you this morning. And it is important that we take care of ourselves. And God has equipped us to take care of ourselves. He has caused us, He has sent His only begotten Son. He has given us the Word of God. He has given us His Holy Spirit. And He has given us His own armor to live this life, to live in victory. We have no excuse to sit as victims. We have no excuse not to win in life and to share the goodness of God everywhere we go. Can you imagine even your own kids and before they leave your house, we're either packing their bags with, with how to win in life or either we're packing their bags, they're watching us every day, either with good or bad examples. But let me tell you what, the armor of God that has been given to us, we need to make sure that we realize what we've been equipped with every day. So let's get right in to today. And what I want to share with you comes from Ephesians. The armor of God is an illustration in the Bible that reminds Christians, every son and daughter of God, that we've been given not just mere natural armor, but the armor of God about the spiritual reality that there is a battle in this life as long as we remain here on this earth. But we have the protection against the battle that's in this life. People get caught up in this term, spiritual battle. Let me just tell you what spiritual battle simply means. The fight to believe God's truth over the enemy's lies. That's what this spiritual battle is all about. But we have been equipped to win. But see, when the enemy lies to us, and let me tell you what, just like he lies to you with thoughts, he lies to me with thoughts. If you are here on this earth, you, we all have thoughts to us with lies of the enemy. But when we believe he, the enemy's lies, they can become mindsets or strongholds in our minds if we choose to believe the lie of the enemy versus the truth of the word of God. But you've been equipped to resist the lies of the enemy. Each piece of God's armor that's been given to every believer gives us the defense to resist his lies and temptation to sin. See, we've been equipped so we don't have to live as a victim, that we don't have to live as merely trying to figure out through this life what the will of God is. So let's get right into this. There is nothing that God has not prepared us for in this earth to live this life of victory. Ephesians chapter six and verse 10, 
Paul gives this illustration like the Roman soldiers that he saw in battle back then. But remember, although he relates it to the equipment of Roman soldiers, it goes far past the equipment of Roman soldiers. This is the equipment with the armor of God that is so powerful. Paul says in verse 10, he says, a final word I want to give to every believer. What is so interesting in this congregation, it wasn't just men, it wasn't just women, but it was children in this congregation. He was giving this word to the church. He said, be strong, not in your own might and not in your own power, but be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on all of God's armor. That used to really throw me for a loop. I thought, how do I put it on? Do I just get up in the morning and pretend like I'm putting on the belt of truth? Do I, do I get up in the morning and just pretend like I'm putting on a helmet of salvation? No. He said, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies what that means is all the deceit and trickery of the enemy. Verse 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Your fight is not against your neighbor. Your fight is not against your children. Your fight is not against your best friend. It's not against your spouse, but it is against the mighty powers in this dark world. It is against evil spirits in the heavenly places. You know, a lot of the things, the agitations that we have with people, a lot of times that's just the enemy trying to stir mess up in your family. It's, it's the enemy trying to stir stuff up in your friendship at your workplace. Therefore, he says again, put on every piece of God's armor. Why? so that you will be able to resist the enemy because we can't do it in our own might. We can't do it just with our own willpower. I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just going to try to forget it. We can't do that. We have to do it with the help of God. Yield it to God's help and his strength so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. If we're ever living in the time of, of people not even wanting to stand up for God in the time of evil, but let me tell you what, for such a time as this, you were born, you were created. God knew that you were born for this time and this hour. You were equipped, you can make it because your heavenly Father is for you. Then after the battle, you get that? That's good news. Then after the battle, you're going to get through the battle. You're going to get through this. Whatever you're walking through, you're going to get through it. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. I love that scripture, rooted and grounded in the love of God. No God loves you. No God's for you. He's going to see you through. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness for shoes put on the peace that comes with good news so that you will be fully prepared. We have to have all the truth of the word of God to be fully prepared. In verse 16, in addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery errors of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet. Take your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And verse 18, pray in the spirit at all times. And on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers with all believers everywhere. Having these truths about the armor of God and help resist the enemy and fight the good fight of faith in your thought life. So I want to look very quickly at every piece of armor. You could get so down deep in the study of this, which is really, really cool. 
But I needed to know personally how to put this on because it sounds really cool. I love battle. I love armor. If you don't know, I really think Wonder Woman's really cool because I love the armor. I love the different pieces of armor. But when you understand as a Christian which pieces of armor and why they wore the different pieces of armor and God's armor and why he gives these pieces of armor to us as a believer and that we understand that we stand in these and we take hold of these because that's a part of how we resist the enemy because the enemy's not going to flee at Misty's name. He's going to flee at Jesus' name because Jesus is the one that put him in his place. But if we don't stand in our God-given rights because now we are children of God, then we're just going to be whipped every day in our thought life and never be all who God wants us to be. God wants us to be in this life, not wait until we get to heaven. He has called us here to, to fulfill the purpose that he has given us. Have you ever heard this stated before? The richest place in all the earth is at every grave site because people have lived and passed not fulfilling their God-given potential that God has meant for every believer. God wants you to fulfill all he has given his son's life for. He loves you dearly. And he wants you to do all that he has called you to do. He loves you. And he doesn't want the enemy to keep just having havoc in your life. But you know what? We have to stand up and, and do something and stand in all that God has called us to do. All right, number one, the belt of truth. Let's just hit this real quick. Stand your ground putting on the belt of truth. This is the piece of armor that the soldiers would wear that was the least seen. If you look up the armor, it was such a cool piece of, of equipment that was so neat looking. But this was the most hidden piece of, of armor that, the, that they would wear in battle. It was the piece of armor that was the least seen but the most important, because every other piece of armor that they would wear would attach to this belt, the belt of truth. Everything hung on this belt that they would wear. Some of the translations use the phrase like having girded your loins of truth. The loin is not a, a phrase used in our, in our language today, but it was, uh, it was, gathered around the reproductive organs. In Paul's days, men would wear long robes. So what they would do when they would go to battle or they would go to do hard labor of work, they would gather up their robes and they would tuck it in their belt. So what they would do when they would gather it up, then it would cover their reproductive organs. They would also, in this belt, if you look it up, there, was, um, there were um, also uh, leather-like material that would hang down also to cover them. Because, see, they wanted to reproduce and raise children after their own kind. It was very important to cover their reproductive and to cover their loins. God knew, listen, that we needed to be wrapped in truth so we are prepared for battle. Because the first area in our life which the enemy frequently attacks us with is our identity. Knowing who we are. God, the enemy tries to attack us in our thoughts of our identity and to question who we are. Are you really who God says you are? Are you really going to make it? Do you know what your past looks like? Do you know where you come from? Do you know? He'll question that thought and you will never do this. And you'll, that identity 
but we need the truth of God's word about who we are in Christ Jesus. It has nothing to do with us, but all about him. It's only the truth in God's word that will set us free. This is where our identity comes from. We are take only our identity in him. But you see, the devil is the father of lies. And that is his tactic. That's his number one tactic. And his favorite weapon is lies. But you see, every piece of armor of God is attached to the belt of the truth. This is our firm foundation. This will always be our firm foundation. It never goes out of date and it never goes out of style. This is our guiding truth at all times. If we don't begin with the truth, we will never, ever defeat the enemy. John 17, 17 says, Jesus says, God's word is true. So how do we apply putting on the belt of truth in our everyday life? We put on each piece of armor by walking in its source. So what is the source of the belt? It is truth. The source of the belt is truth. We put on the belt of truth by getting into the word of God every single day. How do I put on the belt of truth? I put the truth of God's word in my heart every single day. Psalms 119, 160 says, the very essence of your words are truth. All of your regulations will stand forever and ever. Number two, the body armor of God's righteousness. You see, the enemy tries to undermine our self-worth and question our place with God. Anyone who struggles with self-esteem can fall prey to the enemy's lies with a bombardment of his thoughts and his lies. But we have to stop listening to the enemy's lies and listen to what the word of God says. Rest in the work of Jesus that Jesus has done on the cross. What does righteousness mean? It means being made right with God by the works Jesus paid on the cross. You are in right standing with God if you have made Jesus your Lord and Savior. God's righteousness protects our heart from guilt and shame. So, so when the enemy, the war is in your thought life, right? So when the enemy comes to you at his thoughts, no. You have the armor, the body armor of God's righteousness. You have to know that you are equipped with that by the works that Jesus paid on the cross. You have to have knowledge of knowing that because you know that that comes from the word of God. You've been equipped with that because that comes from Jesus. That's a work. God's righteousness protects our heart. So when those thoughts and those lies come against us, say, no, mm -mm. I have the body armor of God's righteousness. And I refuse that lie, and I refuse that thought of shame in Jesus' name. But see, when we do miss it, and we will, then we go to God quickly and get it right. Can I please share with you where I'm coming from when I tell you that you have been made righteous? It's not in your own works, but it's through Jesus. That comes from Romans 3 in verse 25. For God represented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life. The shedding of his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those 
who sinned in times past. And here we go in verse 26. For he was looking ahead, including them, and who would do this in the present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just. And he makes sinners right in his sight when? When they believe in Jesus. That's when we can say, I have the breastplate of righteousness in Christ Jesus. So when shame tries to come at me, no, no, no. I have the blessed breastplate of righteousness. That's how I put that breastplate of righteousness on. No, I resist that foul thought, devil. You shut up. I have the breastplate of righteousness. That's how I put my breastplate on. Because I enforce what already belongs to me with the truth of the word of God. That's how we apply it. And when we do miss it, we ask God to forgive us. And just like that, we stop doing we, what we know hurts God and we're back in right standing. See, there comes a time when we have to rest in the work of Jesus and say, God, thank you. You have to believe him when he says it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Stop believing the voices of your past and stop, start believing the voice of your heavenly father. You've been listening too much to the voice of your past. Start listening to the voice of your heavenly father. Get back in to the words that identify you. Three, shoes of the gospel of peace in verse 15. For shoes put on peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. You know why you're attacked so much in your thought life? Because he wants to take your voice from sharing the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. You can share the gospel. That's why he wants to take your peace. That's why he wants to take your voice. Because you, he wants to say, you can't share this gospel. Yes, you can share this gospel. Do you share where all the good restaurants are? Come on. Do you share where all the latest good, clean movies are? How about sharing what God's done in your life? How easy is that? For shoes, I give you peace to share the gospel. If we are disciples of him, who has totally changed our life, then this should not stay in these four walls, but we should take the love of God everywhere we go. He is too good. What's so cool about the Roman soldiers? I don't know how many golf players, but these shoes are cooler than golf shoes. They were so rooted, thank you. They were so rooted. These shoes, they were so rooted in their warlike stance that they could take ground and they could stay rooted in those grounds to fight those wars. That, let me, let me read this. Um, did I say, yeah. That you will, okay. For shoes put on peace that comes from good news so that you will be fully prepared. So these guys would be so awesome in war that it says that they would wear these uh, shoes that on the bottom of each of their shoes in war, they would have what you would call hobnails. And they would have a hundred hobnails on the bottom. They're like spikes on each of their shoes. So I'm telling you, they were like seventh of an eighth long and they would be so attached into the ground 
Do you know reading the Word of God, the Gospel of Jesus, we can be so rooted in the Word of God, I don't care what comes across the news, I don't care what new kind of doctrine and funky, funky doctrine comes out, I don't care what they say is not relevant to the Word of God anymore, this has gone out of date, that when we get so into the Word of God, nothing's going to move me, nothing's going to shake me, I am standing with the Word of God, Jesus is the only only way to the Father. There are not many ways to the Father. Jesus is the one and only true God. Muhammad's dead. This God's dead. That God's dead. Jesus is the only one that's been raised from the dead. I'm talking rooted and grounded. Those are the shoes of peace that nothing's going to shake our faith. But we have to know the Word of God for ourselves. The gospel of peace keeps our feet anchored and standing firm of what we believe. I can't know it for my kids. I can't know it for my husband. I can't know it for you. I've got to know it for myself, that I'm unshakable. I know God, that I am rooted and grounded in the word of God, in the love of God that I worship him for myself, that I get into his word for myself. So how do I apply it? I surround myself with scriptures about the truth of who I am in Christ. I resist the lies of the enemy that steals my peace. If we don't think things are trying to steal our peace in today's time, walking, we just got back from vacation. People are on vacation looking mad. You can't even take vacation and look peaceful. We were just people watching and entertained. Didn't even have to spend money to be entertained. It's like, God bless them. Mad. Drivers trying to steal your peace. Lines trying to steal your peace. Waiters trying to steal your peace. Everything trying to steal your peace. How else can we keep our peace? I love this verse. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind all who trust in you and all whose thoughts are fixed on you. There are so many things out there trying to tell you. Get grounded. Go outside, take your shoes off. Get grounded. Go out and do exercise. Get grounded. Now, I'm not saying you can't do natural things. It's, I understand. I, I don't have time to even go there. I'm just saying let God ground you. Yes. Do things for yourself naturally. It's good to exercise. It's good to go outside, take deep breaths. I use Lamas now more than I ever did giving birth. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying do, do deep breath exercise. It's good for you. I don't got, got time for all that. Okay. Number four, I'm meddling now and I ain't I got time to go meddling. Number four, the shield of faith, verse 16. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop every fiery era of the devil. Now, if this isn't the battle of thought life, but we've been equipped with every piece of equipment that you need. We have to be active in our walk with God and not passive. When Paul wrote this passage, he was referring to Roman soldiers who would take this big piece of metal and it would cover their entire body from head to toe. Those dudes had to be strong because this was metal, right? Not only was it metal, but it was covered with many layers of leather. Not only that, they would go and they would dip this shield into the water so it would be wet. So when the arrows, arrows, the arrows would come, then when those arrows would hit the shield and it was wet, it would put those arrows out that were fire and it would totally defend them, right? How do we apply this by putting up our shield of faith with the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith, 
comes by and of the local news, by hearing of the local gossip, of the word of God. So when the era of lies start flying in your thought life, hold fast to the word of God and combat every lie of the enemy with God's word. James 4, 7 said, so submit to the authority of God. Resist the devil. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm against him, and the devil will flee from you because you're not standing in your own might. You're not standing with your own words. You are standing as a child of God, rooted and planted in the word of God, in the peace of God, knowing who you are as a child of God. And he has to flee. Number five, put on the helmet of salvation. Salvation comes the moment we place our trust in Jesus. The helmet of salvation, just like the breastplate of righteousness, rests totally in the work of Jesus that was paid on the cross. The battlefield of your thoughts is the primary place the spiritual battle is fought. It's the fight to believe God's truth over the lie of the enemy every single time. Jesus said in John 8, 36, if the Son sets you free, then you are free indeed. We can be as free or the sad thing about it, we can live bound by the enemy's lies. It's our choice. Who are we going to believe? John 10, 10, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. How do we apply putting on the helmet of salvation every single day? We're going to have to resist the thoughts that don't line up with the word of God. See, this is an active lifestyle every single day. It's not just coming to church on Wednesday and Sunday. It's an active lifestyle every single day. We have to put in remembrance God's character and faithfulness, not only in the scripture, but God's character and faithfulness in our everyday life. Put yourself in remembrance of his goodness and faithfulness. How else can we apply this? In our everyday life, we have to wash our mind, the renewing of our mind in the Word of God. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, His pleasing, and perfect will. Number six, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. It says, take up the sword of the Spirit, which is His Word. How do we apply this every day? The explanation of this, we just simply put God's Word in our heart every day. You see, this is the piece of armor that is both defensive and offensive. I, I, I love this. Listen to me. This is so important that we can't just sit and read the Word of God. The Greek word here for word in this scripture is rhema. Rhema means the spoken Word of God. We are to speak God's Word. Speak God's Word. Jesus modeled this so clear, so clear when the devil tempted Jesus. And if the devil tempted Jesus, don't think he's not going to tempt you. We see this in Luke chapter 4, 1 through 13. You need to go back and revisit that. Every time, the th those specifically there, the three times the devil tempted him, Jesus responded, it is written. He didn't get in the conversation with him. He just said the word, it is written. The devil tempted him. Nope, it is written. The devil tempted him. Nope. 
it is written. You always respond to the lie of the enemy with the word of God. Speak the word out of your mouth. If you're believing God for something, speak the word of God out of your mouth. The spoken word of God, the word of God in our heart and out of our mouth. That's the sword of the spirit. That's how we put on the armor of God, not just merely the armor of a Roman soldier. I'm talking about the armor of God to every child of God that we walk in. And last but not least, in verse 18, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Man, I love talking to God throughout the day, every day of my life. I talk to him about everything, everything, everything. When something disturbs my heart, I talk to him about it. He is my very best friend. He is the love of my life. He knows me and gets me better than anybody. Don't ever go behind or try to manipulate or try to control a situation. How about we go to God and pray about everything? Because, see, we can get all uptight and you can get all anxious and you can get all worried and you can get all tense. Or we can cast every care or every worry on him. Because I promise you, he cares for you. He sees you and he loves you. And he wants to be with you every day of your life. He's your creator. He wants that relationship with you. We put on each piece of armor by applying God's truth to our life. God is a good God. Blessed are those that believe the Lord that he would fulfill his promise to them. He is a promise keeper. And he is a good God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your word. You are good. You are loving. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. For your goodness. And Father, I thank you today that no matter where we are in life, no matter what season of life that we're in, that God, that from this day forward, that we will no longer live life, Father, in um, even vi victim mentality or, or questioning the past or questioning the now. But Father, we look toward you. We look toward a bright future, Father, because we have life with you. God, we have a great life. We don't look at what we do or don't have God, we thank you that with you, God, we have much. And God, the best thing that we can walk from today is knowing Jesus as our Savior. So as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I just want to ask you this question. I know my life was forever changed and many lives here, their lives were forever changed and if you're here this morning and you just say, you know, I would like to make Jesus as my savior because what you were talking about today, I have no clue of that kind of love, power, or loving God that you are talking about. And I just simply wanna pray that prayer of salvation with you. All you have to do is just raise your hand and acknowledge, hey, I wanna pray that prayer with you this morning. If you'll just simply raise your hand and I wanna pray with you this morning. Anybody here this morning? It, I see that hand. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else this morning? I see that hand. Anybody else? 
This is going to be your best day ever. I see that hand and that hand. Yes. After you've raised it, you can put it down. Anybody else? I see that hand. We're going to pray this prayer. And we're going to all pray this with you because I'm telling you what, this is going to be your best day ever. Oh my goodness. So as we pray this prayer, all you have to do is just mean it with all of your heart. And if you're watching online, just pray this prayer with all your heart. Say, God, I believe with my heart that you sent your son Jesus to this earth to pay a debt that I could not. And on that th third day, you raised him from the dead. Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord and to be my Savior. Forgive me of my past. Today, you are my Savior. Now let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person that prayed that from their heart. That today going forward, Father, they will know a love like no other. By a Father that affirms them. Thank you, Father, for showing them going forward. They will never, ever be the same. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.